Election protests intensifying as thousands take to the streets, demanding that every vote be counted. Ainsley. Ashley Strohmeyer is live with the chaos erupting in cities across our country. Hey, Ashley. Hey, Ainsley. Police clashed with a mob of protesters in various cities across the country last night. Now, it was peaceful at first. They raised Biden campaign signs, then chanted, count the vote, but then it got completely out of control. 60 people ended up being arrested in New York City for setting fires, spitting in officers' faces, and even punching an NYPD chief in the face. Police also found weapons and loaded magazines during an arrest. Now, in Detroit, protesters were furious over the lack of access to the ballot counting process. Officials ended up padlocking those doors so they couldn't get in. Those protesters were chanting, stop the vote, following news of the president filing that lawsuit in Michigan. And a riot was declared in Portland because of widespread violence. And then in Philly, the protests were twofold. They were calling for racial and political justice. That follows the release of body camera footage and the police shooting of Walter Wallace Jr. Listen. Considering the time that we are in right now and all that is happening, this is a very fitting subject Father wants us to discuss. In this Revelation series, we have gone through most of the book of Revelation, except the last three chapters. Chapter 20 is a short chapter, but a highly important one. There are so many preconceived notions that are attached to this chapter. Most of them are due to people reading and leaving out context of the full chapter. We have two great events that happen in this chapter. We have Messiah's 1,000 year millennial kingdom and we have Judgment Day. And if this world continues to move as we are seeing it move, it looks guaranteed that many people living today will be a part of one of these two events. There will be those that make it through the Great Tribulation without taking the mark of the beast that either live through it completely or die as martyrs and then there will be those who die in their sins without repentance and belief in Yahshua that will be present for Judgment Day. This is a highly important chapter that we need to go over. This world needs Yahshua, but they are being steered into wanting this coming false Messiah. When reading this chapter and digesting it fully, we see so many things. We can understand the importance of Yahshua and the grace given to us. We understand the importance of being written in the Book of Life. We understand how true our Father's word is. We understand that we don't want to be present at Judgment Day. We understand why it is so important that we all continue to share the gospel with all that want to hear it before their time is up. When reading this chapter and really meditating on what it says and then correlating it to the many prophecies found in both the Old and New Testament, I just feel a sense of love for our Father that is indescribable. He has given us his word so that we can be ready for him and not deceived by this God-forsaken world run by Satan. If we know the ending, it makes it harder for us to be deceived. This is the final chapter before our promises come, and it's something we must understand and live in the understanding of right now. Everyone today will tell you that they live with all these different type of life goals. But in actuality, for those who call themselves believers, our main life goals should be to be on the right side of this chapter and have nothing to do with the second death. But how will we know if we don't read and study it? So this is what we will do right now. Let's discuss Revelation chapter 20. Let's begin. Revelation chapter 20. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yahshua and for the word of Elohim, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of Elohim and of Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. 
Now when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from Elohim out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before Elohim. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged each one according to his works. Then death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let me say it one more time. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 is a very controversial chapter in the Bible for many. Not because there's a lot of hard imagery to understand, but because it touches on a subject that many already have preconceived biases of. In reviewing the thousand year reign of Messiah, if we really read the chapter and let go of some of those initial thoughts, we can see that while it is perfect for those who are part of the first resurrection, those who do not worship the beast, there are some brewing conflicts that get resolved in the end. Through this chapter, I'm sure there are many questions and I hope to bring clarity to some of them. But I do not have all the answers. The things he directs me to, I let guide me. And the unanswered questions I have, I wait for him to answer them. And if he does not, then it wasn't meant for me to know. The one thing I do not do is question him and his ways. That is not my job and it's not yours either. So please receive that. Let's discuss this chapter. After the battle of Armageddon that we saw in chapter 19, in this chapter, we see the devil being bound and sealed for 1,000 years. During this period, he will not be here on the earth to harass the believers until the millennial 1,000 year reign of Yahshua is over. When Elohim bound the devil for the 1,000 years, the angel put him in the abyss, not in the burning lake of fire. The lake of fire is reserved for his final punishment. So you already understand that there's still more that needs to be done here. Those who live during this period are the tribulation saints. These are the martyrs during the great tribulation and those who refuse to take the mark of the beast. These are those who will reign with Messiah right here on this earth for 1,000 years. No one will enter into the 1,000 year millennium unless they are a believer. These are those who are blessed and are part of the first resurrection. Verse four tells us, then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yahshua and for the word of Elohim, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. Again, these are the tribulation saints. So those that resist the devil and his schemes and plots during the great tribulation will be greatly blessed. Remember that. Verse 5 then tells us that the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Verse 6 is another important verse. It says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of Elohim and of Messiah, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Understand again, this is another huge reason that we are blessed as believers. You see, living today in this world, being under his covering, we are able to receive his spirit within us that allows us to live in union with him, experiencing all the fruits of his spirit, especially that peace that passes all understanding. This is a current awesome blessing. That feeling that everyone is searching for but rejects at the same time, we actually have. And that is a blessing just by itself. But this verse emphasizes another part of our blessing. 
You can easily see that the wicked, those who died as unbelievers, disobedient, and living in rejection of Yahshua, they have no part in this resurrection. We, who are believers in Yahshua, are redeemed. We are not subject to eternal death because we have life when we were born again. We will never die. This second death mentioned here is for the lost, the disobedient, the unbelievers of this fallen world. Understand, the first death is only physical. Our physical bodies can die, yes. That's our flesh. And that's what the devil wants us to live through and only think about. When we only concern ourselves with the physical, we ignore the spiritual, which obviously, according to the scriptures, is much more important and where the rewards really are seen through. So the devil will make everyone only worried about the physical and from that make those deceived by him share his same fate when they will be part of the second death, which we as believers, again, have no part in. So all those who are running scared because of the coronavirus and scared because of the tribulation, that fear does not come from our father. He wants you to live fully in him and await his promises. Do not let the devil take you from our father's covering and make you a part of the second death. Again, the first death is physical, but the second death is spiritual and eternal in the lake of fire, the final eternal hell. That is verse 6. Now, let's go over the millennial kingdom. This 1,000 year period is Messiah's millennial kingdom. Messiah's 1,000 year reign upon David's throne is the fulfillment of Elohim's promises to Abraham, Isaac, Israel, and to David. But it's also more than that. What we see in this chapter is the final proof of the corrupt nature of man's sinful heart. Let me explain. During this millennial kingdom, Yahshua is present in Jerusalem, ruling the world, and the saints of all ages and resurrected bodies administer the kingdom righteously under his direction. All evil is prohibited and punished immediately. Even Satan is locked away so that he cannot in any way influence mankind. And that's how most people just review the chapter. But in reading closer, without our preconceived notions, we see something else. We know that the tribulation saints will reign with Messiah and be his priest. We know that. But as we continue reading, we also know that after the 1,000 year period, Satan is loosed out of his prison and goes and deceives the nation to gather them together for battle. That's verses 7 and 8. Now think. If the only people that were alive during this period were tribulation saints, and they were priests who were blessed, who will have no part in the second death, what are we seeing happening in this chapter? Who is Satan going out and deceiving? Because the only people that were alive were the tribulation saints. So you must think about it. Many of the believers who enter the millennium after the battle of Armageddon, being in their natural bodies as survivors of the tribulation, will have children who will also reproduce throughout the thousand years. The preconceived notion is that this 1000 year period is a time of peace and is perfect. And while it is for the tribulation saints, the problem of sin that we are all born into still has not been done away with. This 1000 year period is not heaven. And that's why there's conflict in the middle of the chapter. So many of us read the good part of the millennial kingdom, but do not consider why Satan is loosed and what is going on. Many of those descendants of the tribulation saints will reject Messiah and will remain unsaved and over the 1,000 years produce descendants that will be in rebellion. At the end of the millennium, Satan will be released from prison to make one last attempt to defeat Messiah. He will deceive the nations into rebellion against Elohim, and those that rejected Messiah will be following him. The reference to Gog and Magog shows that this final battle will be like the invasion described in Ezekiel chapter 38. The beloved city is the earthly Jerusalem, headquarters of Messiah's millennial kingdom. So it's important to know, especially for the young people who feel like we're approaching the end of the world. This is not the end of the world. The time after this great tribulation and this new world order will be a blessed time. All you need to do is continue to persevere and make it through. You will have a blessed life. You will be priest of Elohim. What you do not have in this current fallen world, you will have in his millennial kingdom. This is assured to you. Remember it. But during this time, there will be rebellion. 
What we see is that the rebels will be quickly destroyed by fire from Elohim. Satan will then be cast into the lake of fire where his henchmen, the Antichrist, and the false prophet are. Their torment will be eternal. But this is the millennial kingdom. This is a promise of great peace and blessings for those who make it out of the tribulation. Now, verses 11 through 15 describe the final judgment of all the unbelievers of all ages. It describes judgment day. John describes the terrifying scene set before him. He sees the judge who is seated on his throne of judgment and all of the accused standing before him. The verdicts handed down from his throne will be equitable, righteous, and just. But in accordance with your hardness and your impenitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath and the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation, and anguish on every soul of man who does evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Greek. That's Romans chapter 2, verses 5 through 9. Revelation chapter 20 is just confirming this prophecy. Elohim will give to each person according to what he has done. If I think of fear, this is what brings me fear. It is a fearful thing even to imagine standing before Elohim and have nothing but our own wicked works to show for our time here on earth that he has given us. That's why our grace received through belief in Yahshua is so great and wonderful. Because if I was to stand before Elohim without Yahshua, I'll be so ashamed. Verse 11 says, Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. The use for the earth is over. The earth, heaven, and everything in them are under control of Elohim. And at this time, he has no place for them. The earth was reshaped by the tribulation judgments, restored during the millennial kingdom. Now Elohim will create a new heaven and a new earth, as it states in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. And in chapter 21, we see that new heaven and new earth being formed. All the unbelieving dead of all time stand before Elohim, both small and great. It don't matter if they were a celebrity, rich, important, poor. They are judged from two set of books. The books contain the record of every unsaved person's life. Each unsaved person is judged in accordance with his works. These people are not found in the book of life. The book of life contains the name of every person who has received eternal life through faith alone. The books that the unsaved are judged by record every thought, word, and deed of sinful men. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10 prophesy of this day. I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. Wow. Do you remember Yahshua said in Luke chapter 12 verse 3? Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light. And what you have spoken in the ear and inner rooms will be proclaimed on housetops. And Luke chapter 8 verse 17 says, For nothing is secret that will not be revealed, nor anything hidden that will not be known and come to light. His word is true. Make sure you are on the right side of it. You do not want to be a part of this part of the book. The great mass of these unbelievers before Elohim's throne includes everyone from presidents and kings to very poor people. There is no partiality with Elohim. All will face judgment. Those who are lost wait in torment in a place of punishment until judgment day. These are all of the unbelievers throughout time who have died. 
they will be raised up by Messiah for judgment called the second resurrection. And as verse 15 says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is why you want to be found in the book of life. The second death is eternal punishment in the lake of fire, experienced only by the unsaved. Once this final judgment occurs, there is no further need for either death or hell. An eternal separation is now made between those who have life and those who have death. Those who die in their sins in this world will die a second death in eternity. They will be sentenced to the lake of fire forever at the great white throne judgment. And this is why us as believers continue to live for Elohim and spread the gospel. I don't want this faith for anyone, even my enemies, and all the wicked of this world. Chapter 20 is the end of it all. There will be no repeats of the plagues or judgments of the Great Tribulation. Once and for all, human rebellion will have been wiped out of existence. And once and for all, it will be crystal clear that the death and resurrection of Yahshua is absolutely essential for making the unrighteous human heart into a container of Elohim's holiness. The millennium will prove that even the best of conditions, a thousand years of peace, prosperity, safety, long life, health, abundance, cannot change the wickedness of the unredeemed human heart. Only Yahshua, our Messiah, can do that. And from all this, we should see the true importance of the gospel and why it is so important that we all share it until our time is over. I know. You have so many uncertainties in this life. You wonder whether your understanding of this world is correct. If your understanding of what is to come is correct. Maybe you question if the rapture is real or not what your future will be like according to all this Bible prophecy. So many questions and uncertainties. But the thing is that Revelation chapter 20 leaves no room for misunderstanding. There is a millennial kingdom with tribulation saints, and there is a day of judgment where those not written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire. No matter what, we know that if we do not want to be a part of the second death, we must be found in the book of life. And so what you must do is to continue to press on living as one whose name is written in the book of life. And this we know, those with their name written in the book of life, though they share many things in the belief, one thing for certain is that they trust in Yahweh and live for his will, whatever it is. They did not let the fear of this world or the love of this world deter them from their faith. And that's how you must live today. It's obvious that this world is crazy. It's obvious just by looking at the events that have happened over this election week. Things are going to get crazier. The only thing we know for certain is that we will be victorious as long as we live through faith in Yahshua. Through this chapter, one thing for certain is that this fallen world needs Yahshua. And I pray that those protesting and rioting for this world will recognize the error in their ways and just surrender to the will of Yahshua. Do you understand how wonderful our father is? He could have just given us his law, history, and the prophecies of the Old Testament and show the fulfillment of the Messianic prophecies through Yahshua and the Gospels in the New Testament, while also giving us doctrinal principles to live by in the epistles of the apostles. He did not have to give us the prophecy found in the book of Revelation. But he is amazing and merciful and does not want us to be deceived and lost by all the wickedness that this world is shelling out. So he has given us his prophetic word so that we can know what to expect and know not to be led by Satan and his wicked devices, plots, and schemes. He is giving us every opportunity to escape the terrible judgment that is to come. Remember, no believer in Messiah Yahshua will stand before Elohim at the great white throne. That terrible spot is only reserved for those who have rejected Yahshua as savior, who have decided to crown themselves king, and who have refused to accept Yahshua, the Messiah, Jesus Christ as their true master. Do not make that terrible mistake and follow Satan into the lake of fire. Instead, place your faith in Yahshua and ask him to forgive you of your sins. Then you will be ready to stand before the Son of Man at the judgment seat of Messiah. One thing is certain, you will stand in one place or the other, hell or heaven. Make sure it's heaven. Don't deceive yourself and act like you don't have to choose. Don't think that you can choose not to believe. 
maybe you want to believe that there's no such thing as heaven or hell and none of this makes any difference. Don't think that attitude will save you from his day. Don't think that your rebellion against him, your constant rejection of his ways and his word are just going unnoticed and are inconsequential. Everyone will be judged and assigned to one place or the other. The only question is, where are you going? If you are watching this right now, it's because he is calling out for you to either continue to stay in him or to come to him right now. But the choice is yours. But whatever you decide, please know and remember. Yahshua must be our master as well as our savior. You must submit to him. You must be born again and written in the book of life. Surrender to our master and savior today and be redeemed. As you can easily see, our time is almost up. Make the right decision today. Be blessed. Okay. Thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like this and share it with others. If you have not done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I really would like to thank all those who support this ministry. You know who you are. Your contributions truly make a difference for this ministry, and I'm thankful for the support that you provide. Thank you for following the call Yah has placed on your heart. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.